So I haven't done one of these in a, in, a, in a little bit of time and there probably won't be another one super soon after this one because I'm just really busy with custom projects in the shop and those take precedence to these tool reviews. But this review is for the Atom Stack A30 Pro laser. This is going to be the most powerful laser I've tested in the shop with a wattage output anywhere from 33 to uh, 36 watts. The most powerful one I tested before that was the X2, X, X tool, and that was 20 watts. Now, if you're shopping for these, it's really important to pay attention to um, the wattage of the laser output because some people will list the wattage of the machine, which is can be anywhere from much higher than what the machine's uh, laser's output is. I've seen people advertising like 60 or 120 watts. That's the machine. The laser output is a different number. So just be careful with that because some of these, especially some of these cheaper companies, I think are trying to scam people with giving them the proper outputs of the machine. So just pay attention to that. But the main difference between these, these higher wattage machines and the reason why I've been keeping these in the shop is not necessarily the quality of the end product. So all these machines I've tested, and I say this in every video, the end result's very similar. Um, they're not going to be super different. The, the cut lines on some of the more expensive machines are a little bit cleaner, a little bit smoother. The engravings on some of the more expensive machines are a little more crisp. And then obviously you get some more bells and whistles with the more expensive machines. The main difference between something like this and some of the five and 10 watt machines I've tested is just gonna be how fast those results are produced. So for someone like myself who eventually wants to start selling some of these products commercially, it's super important to be able to get them out as fast as possible. The clock that I never finished, that took days on a smaller machine to cut out. On a machine like this, it cuts that time more than in half. So it's quite a large difference. If you're someone who's a hobbyist or you don't really plan on trying to sell a ton of products, there's really no sense in going out and buying a super high power wattage machine that costs a lot of money. You can get similar results from, from some of the cheaper machines. But I do wanna mention that because I've noticed that a lot um, that companies are not this company, at least from what I've seen, but I've noticed some of these companies um, are playing around with, with the description of, of the wattage of the machines. So just pay close attention to that. Um, this video will have a build project, which I'm pretty excited about. I'll get into it more in the, the video, but I wanted to, I'm eventually gonna redo both of these other two walls in the shop, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need a bunch of these plastic bins. These are ridiculously expensive for what they are. These are almost like $5 a piece at Lowe's. A set of them, which is six, is, is almost 30 bucks, and I absolutely hate plastic. So I wanted to design a way to make that on the laser with scrap ply that I have around the shop because I always have a ton of this stuff. So that is what the build project project will be. Um, I'm pretty excited about this one. I was happy with, with how it turned out. As far as the giveaway for this video, I am not giving away this machine for all the reasons I stated earlier, but I still have the Two Trees laser. It's actually not in the shop right now, but I still have it. So that is the one I'm giving away. It was one of my, it was one of the 10 watt lasers I like the most. One of the reasons being it was the largest bed I've tested on so far. And that does come in handy for some of these larger files. If you watched that video, you knew the reason I didn't give it away at the time was because the company wasn't keen on the giveaway. But now that a couple months have passed, I highly doubt they're gonna watch this video. Um, so that is why I'm giving that one away now. I feel like enough time has passed. It's a buffer that I won't get a nasty email about it. Um, for whoever wins, just a heads up, if they do come after someone, it would be myself, not you. So there, there is that. And I don't share anyone's information with anyone anyways. So in order to enter the giveaway, um, all the instructions are in the description. I implore you to read them. I'm not gonna go over them in depth in here. It's inevitable that I get a ton of questions that could easily be answered in the giveaway. Um, the basic gist is it lasts about a week. 
a computer generated program picks the winner. I don't, didn't want to pick a winner. I've been getting a lot of emails lately about people asking to, to win a laser or get a laser. The reason I choose a, chose a computer program to do it was so that I didn't have to deal with any sort of human bias with picking a winner. There are, I'm sure there's plenty of people that can get utility out of a machine like this. Um, and I didn't want to deal with, with deciding who that person was going to be. That is uh, the basic gist. You just have to leave a comment and I have a comment picking program that picks a person. If you notice your comment doesn't pop up as soon as you, you leave it, it's because some of these videos were getting spammed and the way to avoid that, which has worked perfectly since then, is um, I go through and, and I hold all comments for review. So until I read them and approve them, you won't see them on the site and I'm not on YouTube all day long. So sometimes it takes longer for your comment to be approved and that wheedles out. I could get rid of the bots and everything before they even make it on the page, but that's basically it. But they really pulled out all the bells and whistles for this one. They sent me a kit with two rotaries in it. Um, I've said before, I don't love rotaries mainly because you have to adjust settings in order to set them up and undo them. Ideally, you would have two lasers um, to use these so you don't have to keep switching back and forth. But I realize most people that aren't getting these for free don't have that option. The other reason is because I don't really ever see myself producing products with a rotary. They're mostly used for etching on glasses or cups, um, what have you. And I just don't see myself doing stuff like that in the future but they are part of this review, and I really liked uh, the Chuck style rotary. They also give you stands with the rotaries, which is nice. I also have already reviewed the camera and the, the new style honeycomb bed for this. These, those two videos are already on my channel if you wanna see those, but the main thing's going to be the laser. Um, this is pretty standard. They're all kind of similar at this point, honestly. There are some things that set them apart, this kit came with um, an air pump, which is really nice. I prefer the ones that come with that, obviously. It just makes it so you don't have to buy something else. I always forget to turn this on, so you will see in the video the difference between using one of these and not using one of these. Um, all this other stuff, the honeycomb bed, the camera, the rotaries, those are all add-ons. So the kit comes with just the air pump and the laser. This one, the height adjustment is this little piece of metal. I don't love the standalone height adjustments. I say that every time, but this one's magnetic, so it's pretty convenient. It clips, I've just been keeping it clipped to the side of this. The frame is aluminum, so it will not um, clip to that. But if you're gonna have a standalone piece, it's nice to have somewhere to store it, so you don't have to worry about losing it. Um, this one comes with uh, an LCD panel. Like I say in a lot of these videos, I don't really use this because I have them hardwired to my laptop, but the ones that have this, it is nice. You could um, download files onto the SD card and just plug it right into the system and, and carve just using this if you don't have a designated laptop to, to use with this. Um, so that is nice. In general, this laser, I've tested this one quite a bit because like I said, I already did reviews on, on the camera and the, la well, the laser bit, I was using um, a different laser. So I've gotten a lot of mileage out of this one. It performs similarly to every other one I've tested. I would say the one big con to this one, and I say it about all these lasers, these ones with these top side exposed belts, you can see how much dust builds up on here and it gives a tendency for these rubber bearings to slip. I like the ones where the belts are either inside the frame or flipped over so they're on the inside and they don't collect dust. That's really the one downside. I will say though, I've had this in the shop for a couple weeks and I haven't had an issue with it slipping, but I do like those belts that, um, that are hidden. The other thing is the cable management on this one. There's no drag chains or anything. And while this does look sloppy, I have had no issue with wires getting hung up, 
caught on pieces or anything like that. So while this might not be the nicest looking setup, it is designed in a way that they stay out of the way of the operating part of the laser, which is nice. So the assembly on this was one of the easiest to do. And then like all these machines, the first thing I'm gonna do is obviously turn it on. A lot of them auto home. So you can see this going to home, which is usually the bottom left-hand corner, the X tool, it's not, it's the opposite and um, then I could start engraving. So in the booklet, they don't have material settings, but on their website, they do. The problem with this is like, I usually do uh, oak or birch veneer ply, and they didn't have that on there. So I had to play around with it a little bit. This was the first laser I've done that gave you a spare lens, which was nice. And as these lasers get more powerful, they have a specific note about that it can permanently damage your eyes if you look at it, which they can. Um, it's always important to wear the glasses they give you with this. A lot of these have shields that block the beam anyway, but um, just make sure you really are being protective when you're using these, these high power machines. They can cause permanent damage. Like I said in the intro, this one comes, the, the focus adjustment is this little metal bracket, but it's magnetic so I could keep it attached to the, the machine. And then I could start my engraving. The power cord for the air pump splits. So it's one cord for both the air pump and the machine, which is kind of nice. Um, I have this all hooked up. And then like all these machines, the first thing I do is an engraving of my logo. So sending the machine home and then doing a simple engraving is going to tell you right off the bat if you assembled this machine properly and if your belts are tensioned. These machines that cut faster, they kind of do this um, thing where they overlap. I had the same problem with the X-Tool. It's called overscanning. Um, I turn that off and now you can see it's just engraving the piece. It makes it go a little bit faster. So once I had those settings um, updated, I could send my logo to the machine and see the quality of engraving. At this point, if the engraving's distorted or obviously the machine doesn't run properly, you can very quickly figure out what's wrong with it based on this simple test. This produced my logo nicely. I've had problems with this before where usually the biggest issues in, in assembly is not having the belt touch, uh, tension properly, and you will find that out rather quickly. So I've been working on another project in the shop, which we uploaded in a little bit, and I made a little bit of an error error when installing some hinges. So I had to make some plugs to cover up the mistake. So I figured I'd try out the, the X tool because I can make an exact diameter. And I was trying this on 13 16 oak. Now I'm sure this machine can cut through 13 16 oak, but this is nine passes with the settings they recommended and I couldn't get through it. I tried it on ply, same thing. The reason I didn't do further testing on this is because while I think these machines can cut through thicker materials, you could see one of the problems you'll have is they'll start over burning at the bottom and it will make your, your cut inaccurate regardless of whether you get through it or not, but also because at nine times around something, it's just not efficient to do it. If you want to cut through thicker materials, I still think a laser diode is probably not the best option. I'm usually cutting through quarter inch ply at most a half inch. This will go through that pretty easily. This is 9 16 solid oak, which is the, the thickness I needed for the project I was fixing. It went through that without a problem. When you start getting into these thicker materials, can it cut through it? Yeah, most likely on these more powerful lasers, but um, it's not gonna be super efficient. So that's kind of my take on, on the thickness of materials. So like I said, I just needed these plugs for another project. If you watch the channel, you'll see what I fix um, in the future because I filmed that project. These plugs popped right out. Um, you could see there's no burning towards the bottom, which is nice. It keeps it dimen its dimension. On some of the lesser watt materials, the closer you get to the bottom, it will over burn, which can be a problem. So those were the initial tests of the laser. After that, I had to try out the rotary. Um, I've mentioned how I feel about rotaries. This one had a really easy connection 
for the the axis ease you just had to unplug it and plug in your cord and I could try it out now the rollers they give you calipers for this which I thought was a nice touch they really kind of thought through all the processes of this a lot of people that are using these machines or buying them probably don't have calipers it would just be another thing you'd have to buy and they're they're very useful because you need the diameters of all these objects to get your settings proper so this is the engraving I did. This is a bamboo cut. It's cup. It's backwards. That was my fault in, in light burn. But you can see it produces a really nice engraving. It goes pretty deep into the piece. I was pretty happy with this. Um, as far as setting this up, this is one of the easier ones to set up. Sometimes it could be a real hassle, which is one of the reasons why I complain about these these rollers. It's not really the rollers issue. It's it's more so the setup. You ch you have to mess around with it, um, and you can obviously cannot be doing other projects while doing it. So for this one, because it's a more powerful laser, I wanted to play around with glass, specifically engraving on wine glasses. Now the problem with this is going to be the glass is curved, so it, the focal point is going to change over the course of the glass. I wasn't super concerned about this because of what I was putting on there. It was just kind of like a fun gift for someone. But you saw in the beginning this rotary can be shifted and changed, which will come in handy because you can change um, the angle of the surface and get a, a, a more accurate engraving. So I have blue tape on there because one of the biggest problems with this, these rotaries are you have to spend a decent amount of time making sure everything was on there properly. So I do an engraving on blue tape which doesn't go through the glass. Once I had that set up I could do it on the glasses. I broke my original glass by accident so I bought three cheap glasses to try it out on. Um, this is cold galvanized compound that I sprayed on here. If you, you, if you don't have some sort of backer on um, glass or plexi the laser will go right through it so you need something to stop the beam and create an etch so I tried out the, gal the galvanized compound on the inside of the glass and the outside of the glass with two very different results I had forgotten when I tried in these test projects that go the compound works really good on the opposite side of where you're cutting if you can fluff the project. You could see it's a little pixelated on the outside, but if you look on the inside of the glass, the, the image is much more clear. So I had a third, this is an example of that, it's a little pixelated on the outside, but the insides are really nice crisp engraving. You can see the top of the ears is a little more faded. That's because that's where the angle of the glass was changing. So the focal point got kind of messed up. So I made some changes and I did a third one which turned out the nicest and I was pretty happy with these results. I had a chuck laser for the X tool. I prefer them over the rollers. Much easier to use, much easier to set up, much more versatile. Um, if I was getting a roller, that's the one I would get. So then I put that aside and I started the project um, for recreating these, these toolboxes. You could see there's a little cleat on the back for hanging them on the wall. I could easily um, replicate that out of wood. So all I did was I kind of copied the dimensions and I made a couple holes for plugging plywood in place. If you do any sort of cutouts or even this process reminds me of projects from like elementary school, you're basically just going to be putting tabs on certain pieces, holes on others, and they should fit together. I wanted to use the camera for this because in my camera video I found out that you can trace drawn objects which completely eliminates the need for me learning a computer program. Now there is going to be limitations on this as you will see, but for the most part for these kind of basic objects I can use the camera to trace this. I just drew it out of paper and then I could go through and, and carve it. The problem with that is you can see I spray painted this because the camera picks up darker objects a little bit better, but it curves it. So you can see my blocks, which I also hand cut so they weren't accurate to start with, are a little warped. The outside frame looked good. So I went through and I, I drew a square in light burn. I set it to the, I'm using quarter inch plywood, which is 3.35 millimeters. And then I could overlay this on top of all of the 
squares I had in the piece and then delete the originals. It's kind of how I worked around the errors I had in my, my drawing. Now I went into this knowing this was going to be a prototype. I wanted to see if it would work and it does. So going forward, as convenient as the camera is for something that needs to be highly accurate like this, I will probably make a drawing in SketchUp, which at this point I could do pretty quickly because there's not a lot of curves or anything in it. It will be really easy to do in SketchUp. I could save those files to my computer and then print it out from there so it's perfect. But like I said, I wanted to use the camera again because I think this is just such a cool tool that you can trace these images. And like I said, um, I will probably eventually try my hand at learning some software for drawing stuff. I just don't have the time. So I sent this through the machine and all of my images were screw, uh, skewed. So um, it took me a little while. I do this. This is another reason why the rotaries drive me crazy. I always forget to unengage the rotary. And if you do that, all your images will come out cockeyed. Um, the first time that happened, it took me a really long time to figure out what I'd done wrong. At this point, I usually remember after about 10 or 15 minutes, but for a little bit of time there, you're just trying to figure out if the belts went off tension or whatnot. Um, once I had that figured out, I could cut this pretty quickly. This goes through quarter inch plywood in one pass. You can see where I forgot to turn on my, my air pump and there was a lot of burning. Once I remembered to turn it on, it cut pretty nicely. A lot of times with plywood, it won't evenly go through because the plywood's gonna be varying thicknesses, but this one popped out pretty easily. And then usually what I do is I take a punch and punch out these little pieces from the backside. As long as the majority of it has been cut, they, they will pop out. So then just to test these, I put this on the edge of that piece of ply and it looks like it's the perfect thickness. So I was pretty happy about that. And then I could go to drawing up the rest of the stuff. Like I said, this is a basic prototype. I made this very quickly and you'll see at this point I run into some errors with um, the pencil thickness. So I kind of thought that might have been a problem, but like I said, for a prototype, but I wasn't using a super sharp pencil and I was rushing this in order to get it done. So the thickness of the, the pencil threw off all of my dimensions. You'll see I was able to fix that. But um, like I keep saying, when I finally end up doing this, because I think I'm going to perfect this and, and make some plans out of this, um, I, I will be using a computer and then it should, it should come out pretty accurately. But I'm just using this as key stock that I'm using to get that, that quarter inch measurement as accurately as possible. I can cut this all out with the X-Acto. The X-Acto will cut a pretty clean edge, but it leaves little, little almost fuzzies on the edge of the paper, which the camera is acute enough to pick up, but that causes a little bit of a problem because you don't want those in there. So like I said, um, obviously making, making a drawing of it on the computer will be more accurate. But for the purposes of this video, I was using the camera. More organic shapes with the camera that aren't pieces you have to fit together, I think will work exceptionally well. So it was the same process. I didn't make any modifications to these ones. Um, like with the boxes on the original, I just kind of traced them. There's my image, and then I could cut them all out. So it was a pretty simple process. Um, this is the edge there, you could see all of my tabs are just a little too thick. So all I did for the purposes of this video is I planed them, I pl shaved them down a little bit. With the key stock on there, you could see the teeth are just a little bit too thick. Um, and then I was able to get the whole thing, the whole thing to fit. So these are the, the two front pieces. The reason I made the front and two pieces is because I think eventually if I do this, I wanna be able to put labels on the front and that's easier to read if it's um, flat. And then same thing, I just traced all of these parts into the computer and then had the machine cut them out. This machine cuts really quickly. If you're using one of these, um, make sure you, I have an air vent for, for this. I didn't have it running through this, this whole video, full disclosure, but you really wanna vent all this stuff when, you, when, you're, when you're using this. And then you could see the tabs that, that cut accurately fit in there perfectly. It was the ones where I messed up my drawing that they were a little too thick. But at this point I was able to work it so I could, I could get them to, to fit and, and have something for, for the video. 
This is basically what that looks like. Everything pieces together. You can see there are going to be some changes I want to make for the final. Like I keep saying, this this was a prototype. I might want the back, the bottom to go into the back as well as the, the sides. And then this is just an overview. Those are the pieces I drew up and cut out and a side by side of the plastic container and the wood container. Like I said, I was pretty, pretty happy with this. You could see how I could add a little wooden cleat on the back if I want to hang these um, on the wall pretty, pretty easily and much more cost effective, better for the environment than, than buying the plastic ones.